Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a little bit different. We're not talking about someone who's directly involved with Celtic anymore. However, we're going to talk about somebody who's always going to be linked with Celtic in a positive manner. All the right connotations will keep him forever embedded in this club. He's a legend, he's an icon, and it looks as though it could be the end of his career. Scott Brown is the name on everybody's lips this morning. What does that mean for Celtic Football Club and what does it mean for Scott Brown himself? <laughs> Right then, if you're new to the channel and you haven't already, please make sure to drop down below and hit the subscribe button. We're very close to 33,000 subscribers, a mad number, so if you could help contribute to that, please make sure to do so. Hit the like button as well when you're down there, and aye, let's, let's get on to this. Let's talk about the, the man at hand, Bruni himself. The legend, the man, the myth, the legend. So it's been reported this morning that Scott Brown is ready to hang up his boots. It looks as though he's calling it a day on his footballing career. Um, quite prematurely, um, to an extent, you know, he is at an age now where he would be expecting retirement over the next few years, but it's coming at a time now when there's still a period till the end of the season. We still have, you know, seven, eight games left. You thought he'd maybe finish it off with Aberdeen, but it looks as though he's going to call it a day early. The, the rumours are, the talk is that he's uh, currently in talks with Aberdeen and Jim Goodwin to terminate his contract with, uh, you know, immediate effect, really, um, which just came as a bit of a surprise. I don't think it's what we expected to wake up and see this morning. Um, but obviously it's just not happening at Aberdeen with, with himself and Jim Goodwin, the new manager, following the, the sacking of Stephen Glass. That's probably not went the way that Scott Brown would have wanted it to up at Aberdeen. Of course, he left Celtic at the end of last season after a, a glorious stint at the club. Uh, he went to Aberdeen to work alongside his former teammate in Stephen Glass in a, a player-coach role. And things haven't went well for Aberdeen. They currently find themselves 10th in the Premiership table. They have had probably one of their worst seasons in a long, long time. Um, and they're now in this transition where they look to start afresh and, and turn over a, 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 a kind of unwelcomed chapter in their club's history. They try to turn that over to, to start this new era with Jim Goodwin in charge. And I don't think that Jim Goodwin will have any lack of respect or admiration for who Scott Brown is. But I think it's out of the best interests of both parties, Scott Brown and Jim Goodwin that they both get off to, to fresh starts, uh, pastures new if you like, um, and Jim Goodwin will probably see that uh, being a, a better start for him without Scott Brown. So then, Scott Brown, uh, where does that leave him? If he's retiring, what happens? Now, this is the whole point in this video because, as always, you expect Scott Brown's name to always be linked back with Celtic. You, you know that's the first thing on everybody's minds, or will he return to Celtic? Will he come back in any sort of capacity? We're going to talk about that in this video. But before we do talk about that, I just feel like it's, you know, we're looking at, in my opinion, the most influential an important player in the last decade at Celtic Football Club. Without a shadow of a doubt, he's one of the greatest captains in the club's history, probably just behind Billy McNeil, um, I would argue anyway. And, and maybe it helps that I've grown up with Scott Brown. He's been really, I've always compared him to the likes of Paul McStay, you know, that generational player that defines an era for Celtic. You know, you got Paul McStay um, for a lot of fans back in the 80s and 90s. You've got Tommy Burns as well, players like him. Then you go back to the 60s, you've got Kerry Dalglish in the 70s. You've got all the Lisbon Lions in the 60s. I think Scott Brown is the closest thing we have to those icons in the modern day. And for fans like myself, I'm, I'm 22 this week. Um, and I've grown up basically my whole life with Scott Brown being in the Celtic team up until the, the end of last season. So for me, you're really looking at what I think is the most influential and the most important player to have played for Celtic in, in recent years. And I will say it now before we talk about his official retirement announcement and everything else and we discuss what his actual future may be on a podcast. He's probably the biggest... I, I, I don't know in what way to word that because he's certainly not technically the most gifted. He's he's certainly not up there in that conversation. He was a fantastic player, of course, but you know we've had so many technical players have been better than, than Scott Brown. But no disrespect to Bruni, absolutely not a fantastic player as well. But you know, he, he, in that conversation, he's probably one of the most important, influential, and best players to play in Scotland over the past. 10, 20 years, never mind just Celtic, uh, and his achievements will always be undermined by others, and I actually find it quite hilarious. Um, Scott Brown has won more trophies in his career than most football clubs in the world will win in their existence, never mind in Scotland, you know, I've seen the Hearts fans today giving it that ridiculous pattern, like, oh, 
ending his career with a loss at Tynecastle. Ha <laughs> ha! Like Scott Brown has won more trophies in his short 15-20 year career than what Hearts have in over 100 years of existing. Um, if you're going to try and pipe up, at least pipe up in a logical manner. Um, you could only dream of having players like Scott Brown at your club. That is the reality. And Scott Brown um, is someone who takes that in great stride. You know, Scott Brown knows how much people are envious of him. We've seen it over the years, Hearts fans, Rangers fans, different clubs fans, trying, uh, and even down in England as well, trying to undermine the success of what Scott Brown has done. And there is only one, there's only two logical reasons as to why you would do that. Either you're just playing stupid um, and you, you can't understand how successful a player he is and how deserving of that success he was or you're just playing jealous um, and that's the case for I would say 95% of them uh, I think 95% of folk who do under, uh, undermine the achievements in the career of Scott Brown are in all honesty just jealous um, because he's He's done it, he's came, he saw, he conquered, he'd done it all while wearing the armband, he'd done it all in style, and he'd done it all with a big cheesy grin on his face. Um, it leaves a bitter taste in the mouth of some, and, and some of the opinions this morning go to show that, but one thing can never be underestimated, and that is the, the success of, of Scott Brown and how deserving he was of that. He led Celtic through a golden era um, of success, uh, a quadruple treble, all captained by Scott Brown. Um, truly one of the greats. And someone who I'm always sad to see hang up the boots because I'll always remember him. I'll always look back at Scott Brown as the guy um, who, who defined a, a generation of talent for me at Celtic Football Club. So let's get on to the main topic because we've spoke for a bit about the actual player himself. But we've got to talk about the, the, the conversation that comes out from this. Um, and that is, should we bring Scott Brown back to Celtic? Because um, that is the thing that comes to most people's minds straight away and to an extent it, it slightly annoys me you know but at the same time it's understandable you're looking at someone who gave so much time and, and, and effort to Celtic Football Club that you, you look at him and you look at the relationship he built with everybody the, the board the managers the players so, you know it's rightful uh, but it annoys me because you get such a divide, I think, of people who are, like, just completely disregarding to it, and then you get people on the other side who are like, yes, bring them in without thinking about it. It's just such a knee-jerk thing to, to, to come to, and that's what annoys me. It doesn't annoy me that he's been linked with Celtic. It doesn't annoy me that his name will be mentioned alongside Celtic. What annoys me is the fact that there are such knee-jerk reactions on both sides. You've got to properly sit down and weigh up and, and, and look at it logically. It's not a yes or no. It's not as simple as that. No one at Celtic Football Club, nor... Um, any of, our, uh, any of our fans should be sitting just saying yes or no to it straight away. There's conversations to be had. There's arguments that have to be weighed up. And ultimately, you've got to look if it, if it works and makes sense. In regards to everything I just said in this video about Scott Brown, the respect I have for him, the love I have for him, I would, of course, love to see him back at Celtic Football Club in some capacity uh, before he, he properly retires at, at an old age one day. Um, I really want to see him at Celtic again because he gets this club, he, he, he sort of... He just brings out everything that we love as supporters, that passion, that energy. So I'd love to see him back. I always said I'd love to see Scott Brown as manager. I'm never going to sit here and say I don't want that to happen. I'm hoping that Scott Brown can get to a level in his coaching career where he is capable of managing Celtic. And anybody who says no is probably lying, right? There's, I'm not saying that he should be Celtic manager. He needs to prove that. And I'm hoping he does prove that because I would love to see him in the dugout. He's been a legend as a player. You look at someone like Billy McNeil, Tommy Burns. They've done it as a player. They came in and done it as a manager. You'd love to see that for Scott Brown as well. And you'd be lying to yourself if you say it's or not. Um, however, you know, we've got to think of it logically. Um, it's not a yes or no. It's not I just give him a job because he's a Celtic legend. And it's not a no, he's not, he's, he's, he's not good enough to come in here. If there's a space for Scott Brown at Celtic Football Club and the manager knows there's a space for him, then... Uh, let's evaluate it. Let's explore it. I don't think Ange, Ange Postacoglu, I don't think, has, has had any lengthy meetings with Scott Brown. One came in, one went away. They've probably spoke. Yeah, of course they have. Uh, you know, they've, they've spoke when Celtic have played Aberdeen, I'd imagine. They've, they've probably had some, some form of altercation, a positive altercation, I, could, I should say. If there's an opening at this club to some extent and Ange Postacoglu interviews Scott Brown for it and there is a, a suitable fit for him here and he thinks that, then okay, we go for it, make it happen. But that's what you need to consider when it comes to this. It's how it fits. It's not just a job for the sake of it. Ange Postacoglu right now is building something incredible at Celtic. And you've got to add in this point as well. He's done fantastically well at doing it, considering he's brought no one with him. Ange Postacoglu came into this job 
with none of his former backroom staff, with none of his own coaches, he came in, he's worked with Strachan, he's worked with Kennedy, he's worked with Stevie Woods, he's worked with everybody else in the backroom team, Stephen McManus, Darnell Day, etc, etc. All these guys were already at the club, and he's brought no one with him, he's came in and he's done what he's done with the resources that were given to him, without much of a say I'd imagine in what was happening. And now you see this positivity in all these manager of the month photo shoots where he brings out all the staff, all the unsung heroes and gets the photos with them. You can tell he's built something special there. He's got something good with those coaches just now and he'll like that coaching team. Will there come a day where he needs to add to that coaching team? There probably will. Will that be Scott Brown? That's the whole point in interview processes. That's the whole point in identifying and making sure you get the right guy in. Scott Brown isn't going to automatically get to the front of the queue because he's a Celtic legend. At the end of the day... It's the manager who decides. And if the manager sees someone else that fits, I'm never going to argue with him in choosing them over Scott Brown. I'd love to see Brown come in, but we can't make decisions off nostalgia. We can't make decisions off of sentimentality. That's mistakes it's cost us in the past. Um, Scott Brown, of course, in terms of coaching career, probably hasn't got off to the best start with Aberdeen, but he'll want to improve on that. He'll want to, he'll want to correct the mistakes that were made. Um, and, and he could maybe do that at Celtic. I've seen people suggesting a, a youth team role for him as well, maybe come in and help the B side or the undersides or whatever, you know, that's also a possibility, will Scott Brown want to do that? You've, you've got to think about him as well, you know, it's all very well and good that we presume that Scott Brown would want to come to Celtic, you know, he might want to go and start a managerial career somewhere, uh, which would be very ambitious of him and, and, and probably quite resembling of the person Scott Brown is, this is a guy who wants to challenge himself, this is a guy who wants to be the very best, he's been the very best throughout his career. And he'll want to do that in management as well. So if he sees a job, if he sees an opportunity, you know, who's to say that he wants to come to Celtic? Once again, it's about conversations, it's about identification and seeing if the fit works for both sides, Scott Brown and Ange Postacoglu. Then you can make an informed decision and give an informed opinion, I think, on whether or not he's the right fit for Celtic. Because the manager will know and if he knows best, then we can sit down and agree with it, I think. Which is, yeah, the kind of point to wrap it up. Listen, there's no guarantee that Scott Brown will be thinking about a job at Celtic. He might want to do something else. He might want to go and manage in the lower leagues, um, and, you know, maybe League One, League Two, Championship. You know, we've seen the likes of Barry Ferguson do that um, over the past few years and on the other side. And, uh, Paul Hartley, for example, former players. You know, just, I don't know why Paul Hartley's one of the first ones that come to my head. Um, but, you know, he could easily go and do that. He might want to go over to Cyprus with his pal Lenny. Who knows? Um, he, you know, there's, there's numerous different things he can do. He can go to Punditry. He can do what he wants. He's Scott Brown. Um, so, yeah, there's no there's no, nothing to say or suggest that he'll definitely be in with a shout of landing a job at Celtic. However, um, that's just my opinion for it. If it fits, it fits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. One day, I'm sure we'll see him back at Celtic Park. Uh, in some capacity, whether it be the Paradise Windfall draw or the manager's job, we will see him back at Parkhead and I look forward to that day. Um, but for now, he's retiring, let's, uh, let's cherish and let's thank the man for everything he's gave the club as his career comes to an end. Let's remember what a fantastic servant he was and uh, wish him all the best for his retirement. He's, a, he's had his, cigar, uh, his, cigars, his slippers and his cigars out now for for quite a number of years, uh, maybe not as much this year, but for a number of years, he deserves to stick the feet up. Um, an absolute hero, legend, I love him. And uh, aye, Bruni, that'll do. Right, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all next time.